How's everybody doing today? You're watching Slot Car Mayhem. I'm John, and this will be episode one of the Glendale 65, and this will be about doing the bench work. Most of the bench work that you see here is based on the concept from Lynn Westcott back in the 60s, who came up with the l girder system for model railroad construction. And uh, I've kind of put a different twist on it and uh, beefed things up a little bit to make this 8 foot by 16 foot table that you're uh, watching happen right here. And I'll go through some of the basics first. We'll talk about the l girder frames themselves that I've built and uh, we'll show how it all ties together. Okay, this is showing the end of the uh, one of the L girders, and what we've got, I've got a one by six right here, capped with a one by four this way, and this joint that's right here, down the entire eight foot length is glued, clamped, nailed, and screwed. Uh, the critical portion of this is the glue. You want to make sure you glue it and clamp it. The screws and the nails, I just saw no reason to remove them, uh, but that's what's going to give you your strength is the glue. Uh, what I'm using here for lumber is I'm using uh, 8 foot select pine. Once again, that's a 1x6 capped with a 1x4. Now, Lynn Westcott, uh, his original intention was to use uh, 1x2 and 1x3 to make ale girders with, so I've uh, really beefed this up, but I've got some. Uh, significant spans here and this accommodates for it and as you can tell I'm pushing on it it doesn't deflect at all it's very strong okay the main portion of the Elgerter frame as you can see here with a full 8 foot span and there's my joint right there in the middle And you can see the screws. Look a little closer, you can see the nails. And these are all uh, glued and clamped, and they're very, very sturdy. What I'm using for legs is the legs are standard 4x4, four four, and I've got them cut to 30 inches long. And you can see right here, I've got them notched for the 1x6 to sit into. And I also have a quarter of an inch gap right here and that is uh, serves two purposes one if this wood decides it wants to swell it's not going to distort this and push the one by four up and out also if I want to run wiring up under here I can just continue the wiring through I don't have to bring it around and wrap it around the leg I can just pass it right through and if I do run wiring there I'll be very small gauge wiring so a quarter inch is plenty clearance Plenty enough uh, clearance to uh, make that happen. The uh, hardware is standard uh, quarter 20. That's all I'm using. Um, of course, these completely pass through, and these are going to be cut off once I've got everything set exactly the way I want. But these are full pass through bolts, and they're uh, very secure. The X bracing that I have here is standard 1x2. And for lumber, with the exception of the legs, all the lumber, including the joist, is all select pine. And that is to uh, give me a knot free, which I don't want knots in this. I want this to be knot free, and it's extremely sturdy. So you can see that's very simple. These uh, braces here are cut about 58 inches long, uh, just to give you an idea of dimensional from the joint to the center of the leg is two feet. We got a four foot span to the next leg and a two foot cantilever. I just did all this to make the math easy. So that takes care of one of the frames uh, I constructed for these. Setting the l girder frames themselves was relatively easy. What I've done is I took my first frame, uh, which is this one right here, and I uh, set it in its approximate location and then I tied it back to uh, a column which we have over here 
Just tied that back with some scrap wood to help hold it stationary. And uh, then I proceeded to get that leveled and straight. And I used a plumb bob from the ceiling grid to get this first girder aligned to the ceiling grid. Then I, you know, made sure it was level and it was straight. And I kind of locked that all into place and got that done. Then I went through and did the second one, which is down here. Went through and did the second girder right there and uh, got that one straight and made sure they're all lined up real well. And, went, and once again, I did the same thing where this one was cribbed off the other column that's over here. So once I had these two lined up and into place, then it was just a matter of setting the other two in their approximate locations. And then I started hooking them together with the joist and making sure that everything was level and square. Once I had a series of joists in place and I made sure everything was square and level and it was where I wanted it, then I locked the frames together with the additional X bracing that you see here. And those are not put in with through bolts. Those are put in with just a standard deck screw, uh, three inch deck screw, and just one screw in each end. Once again, that's a uh, select pine one by two. They're 58 inches long. The hole is about an inch or so from the end on each end. And if I need to get under the table this way for any circumstance, all I have to do is take, say, the top screw off of there and drop that frame down. Then I got this whole big corner here I can crawl through and I can get under the table that way if I need access uh, into the middle of the table. The result of the uh, two directional X bracing is an extremely rigid locked in table and it's not going to go anywhere. It's uh, very sturdy, very stout and uh, I'll tell you the truth, I couldn't be pleased with the result. That being said, even though it seems to be uh, very strong and sturdy, it's actually very lightweight and uh, two people could probably pick the entire thing up and move it over if they needed to. Another good thing about uh, the where, where I position the table and the way it's positioned is I'm standing at the back corner of it and I have full 360 degree access so I can walk entirely around the table unimpeded. And that can be important on a table of this size. Uh, there's times where you're just gonna have to get to the other side of the table. So that's uh, one of the things we need to take advantage of. Sometimes some of the best tools you have for checking if everything is square and uh, not warped or potato chipped is your own eyeballs. And as we can see, just by sighting down the uh, top edge of the joist, everything appears to be nice and flat. Okay, marking the joist for alignment is very, very simple. I start with uh, making a mark at the two foot from the end. And I make an additional mark at the six foot mark. One thing that is important is make sure you pull from one end and mark it at two foot and six foot. Don't try to mark two foot from either end. You're never going to be accurate. So start from one point and measure it out and mark it appropriately. And then when it's done, I just take a square and I drop my lines down. And these are the lines that I'll use to line up with the inside of the L girders. And right here you can see my mark, and I have another mark exactly four feet away. Keep in mind the first one you mark, the one at two foot. This is the end here we want to use on the inside of the first, uh, first L girder, and then we'll align it up on the back end. Setting the joists themselves is pretty easy. Um, this is the mark that was done at the two foot section. I've got that here and that's going to end up lining to the inside edge right here of your L girder. 
and I'm going to be using uh, this here as a spacer stick. This is 17 and a quarter in length and it's just a piece of scrap. And I use that and put that into place. Make sure it's flush and good where it needs to be. And that will uh, make sure my joist spacing is proper. And we can see I'm lined up here on the back edge. Right here, back edge of the L girder and a little mark right there. And my spacing's good. I just moved it. And just get it where you want it. Make sure it's good. And then we want to just take and draw a couple little marks here on the back end. And let me darken them up so you can see them. Okay, we got two little marks right here. I don't know if you can see them or not. And those are show where the joist is going to sit. At that point, I'll take a drill and, of course, safety glasses. And I'll come in about an inch from where that, right in the middle of those two lines, I'll come in about an inch on the edge. And I'll just very carefully drill a hole. Don't have to be too terribly neat about it. And there you go. I'll take my stick and put it back into place. I'll push my joist back into place. And then I'll take and I'll run a screw up through this hole and bolt it down. Now the screws I'm using, I don't know if you can see them or not, they're little Torx head deck screws. I highly recommend those. It makes it a lot easier to uh, use your screw gun and put these in place than trying to be up underneath and try to push up with a Phillips. So these make it a lot easier to get them dropped into place. Okay, let's talk a little bit about joist spacing. Uh, what I've got here, this is one of the beauties of L girders, it's very flexible. But starting flush from the end, I've got my joist 18 inches on center until I get to this one right here. That's what my fourth joist, fourth joist. At that point, it's tempting to just go ahead and continue that 18 inch span. However, if I do, you can see right now we've got a joist that's sitting right over a leg. And that we can't have because we can't screw up underneath into this joist. So, what I've done here, if you look at my joint that I've got right here, I came three and a half inches in on either side of the joint and the reason why I did that was to uh, just give me a little bit of room and if I need to get in here at the joint I can. So I'm going to move my 18 inches from the other side of the joint and move it over this way. Now the joist is right on the outside of that leg and I can go ahead and anchor that down. What that's going to give us, however, is going to give us a longer spacing here that we really don't want. 18 inches is kind of pushing it, considering I'll be topping it with half inch MDF. So it'll be very simple. I'll just add another joist right here. That's not a big deal. Uh, the spacing is not majorly critical at this point. Um, it's just to make sure that uh, you've got enough support for the MDF, and uh, but the MDF is going to be mostly cut away as the track evolves. So these joists are pretty much considered temporary anyway. And that's the big beauty of the L girder. If you need to move a joist, you can just unpin one end and move the joist over if you need to. Or you can just add a joist, or you can just unscrew it and move it over or do what you need to do with it. And that's where the big flexibility of the L girder comes in. It's very easy to just uh, unscrew the screw underneath because it's just held in with one screw and pop the joist out or move it over. So that's why I chose the L girder um, to allow me to go ahead and uh, get all of this stuff in place. So I'm going to go ahead and finish that and uh, once I get all the remaining joists set I'll come back and uh, we'll wrap it up. Okay all the joists are now in place uh, with a maximum spacing of 18 inches between the joists. Some cases it's a little narrower. 
Uh, like I said, this is going to be uh, half of these uh, joists will probably be temporary. Uh, a lot of them may be relocated. I might add additional joists as I develop the layout, or I might even remove and relocate some stuff. Who knows? So that's the beauty of the L girder system. It's very flexible and very easy to move risers where you need them, uh, move joists where you need them to accommodate your risers. And uh, this should be uh, pretty solid and work pretty well for me. The next steps are going to be decking it with a uh, half inch MDF and that's going to be temporary uh, because after I get the layout, the track layout itself the way I want, then I'm going to trace around the track and cut those portions out and they will be on risers and elevated off of the uh, joists and uh, so we can have our ups and downs and do all that kind of stuff and it's going to be all open except where track is and that's when the landscaping starts so uh, that concludes uh, doing the bench work for the uh, Glendale 65 for Carrera if you got any questions just hit me up um, if you're going to go ahead and do an L girder construction I encourage you to at least give it a shot because um, it's really a good system and it seems to work pretty well and uh, the toss-up there's always been a toss-up about whether or not you're going to save material I don't necessarily think you're going to save material uh, I think that uh, it's more so for flexibility more than anything else and I'm quite a huge fan of the system to tell you the truth so this works pretty well on this large of a table and I'm looking forward to continuing with the build for now this is John and this concludes episode one have a good day and stand by for episode two. Thanks for watching.